dear director, dear chairman, thank you very much for the invitation. It's great to be here and uh, I'm very proud to be part of this great event. And uh, also I would like to express my congrats uh, for the first uh, uh, Olympic gold for, uh, for a Singapore uh, grown athlete. It was exciting to see that happen. What I'm going to talk about is uh, the efficacy of uh, talent ID and talent uh, development programs and I'm going to try to outline the idea, um, then um, define the questions, present some findings and also talk about some implications at the end. The research I'm going to talk about is mostly from pretty large countries with many youth doing sport and uh, within them, most of them also engaging in competitive sport all year through. So it's going to be really interesting to see what you exactly mentioned uh, before, um, how these, um, this knowledge and these, uh, um, um, this evidence applies actually to a, a very urban and uh, uh, ecosystem. Um, it's going to be interesting to discuss that later. Well, what's the idea? Um, the idea is that there are uh, many young uh, people doing sport um, and as they, as they grow and get older, they get better, but we think it is insufficient what they do to actually become an Olympic or World Championship medalist. So it takes something else, and that is um, particular programs. Um, talents are being identified in order to be in included in these programs, uh, in order to do something with them, uh, promote them. All right? So as they're being the most promising young athletes and they're also treated and uh, provided conditions, they develop better than the others do and they move up to a next stage within a TDP system, a talent development program uh, system, but not all of them progress, some of them do not make it and are deselected. And this happens again at the, at the next stage and again at the next stage. So we got a population of top athletes who are only a few of those who initially were recruited into the system. Importantly here is that these athletes actually developed exactly from the ranks of those who were initially um, recruited into the system. Okay, so we're talking about talent identification as the, the, the activity to select the most promising athletes, young, young talents, for the purpose of focusing talent development programs of these selected few. Most common criteria for selecting uh, talents are the coach's eye, uh, but also performance, be it in competition or in uh, specific physio physiological tests or motor tests. Um, sometimes evaluated relative to biological maturation or, or uh, relative age and so on, uh, anthropometry or also psycho uh, psychological tests. The, com the commonality among all of these is that they assess performance or components of performance or their progress. TDP is then the activity to provide conditions and apply interventions to the selected athletes to increase their likelihood of long-term senior international success. So the, the, the goal is very clear, it's not about winning youth games or youth championships, but the goal is clearly at a senior international level, okay? Um, typical activities or, or measures applied to the young athletes are high-profile coaching, scientifical, medical, paramedical services, nutritional counts, uh, counseling, um, also psychological services, lifestyle management, and support for education, and etc. Now, analyzing the focus and, con and content of what is actually being done to the young athletes, generally, we find that they have a, a common time economic core, in the sense that they aim at either expanding the time available for doing sport, training and competition, or we call that extensive time economy, and or using that time more intensively in terms of increasing the um, uh, success gain per invested time unit and we call that intensive time economy. <coughs> Excuse me. For example, uh, we typically try to identify and recruit talents at a, quite, uh, at a pretty young age. This is only for one reason, in order to expand the number of years of treatment period until the expected age of, of peak performance. So uh, this is also just a sign of uh, extensive time economy. So actually early talent identification and early talent development is based on three fundamental premises. First, we believe that talent can already be identified reliably at a young age. 
Second, senior success is the result of a long-term development within one sport. With progressing age, um, training volume increases and, um, um, and also success increases and, and in parallel the um, uh, athlete services are being intensified. And third, uh, long-term development of excellence can already be positively influenced at a very young age. These premises can be tested empirically and that's what I'm going to talk about next. So the first question is actually, uh, do characteristics assessed in early talent identification correlate with later performance? Okay, um, this is not easy. From the start, this is um, um, beyond any empirical research, this is a very difficult and challenging task. Why? Because um, the task, the performer and um, characteristics of the environment change over time and they change differently between different athletes. And above that, they interact with each other. So for example, regarding the task, um, success is a result of interaction between athletes and their opponents. But the performance of the, uh, the opponents is first unknown and second cannot be influenced. I can only influence the performance of my athlete. Second, performance may be composed by, by uh, various components, but they are compensable mutually. So one can get a, a top athlete with totally different profiles of qualities. Third, performance structure in sports uh, changes um, through the evol evolvement of sports. So we're playing different playing systems in football today, rules change in volleyball or in, in gymnastics and so on. But we do not know what will be the demands of a top athlete in 10 years, for example, or in 20 years. So this is in, um, predictable, more or less. Um, the performer biological maturation uh, varies, relative age varies between athletes, um, and also psychological qualities, and they also change over time within an athlete and interact with the other, uh, with the other features. And the environment uh, prior uh, practice done and future practice vary between athletes and are difficult to predict, as well as the, the social support from the, from the social environment. These, above that, interact with each other, uh, which complicates the, the task of TID even more. And uh, in addition, um, whatever test we apply, be it competition or, or any type of test, any test is imperfect. So they're imperfectly re reliable and, and valid. So testing empirically, we actually find, uh, this is an example of uh, juvenile uh, competitive success and their correlation with later senior um, age uh, success, and we find that the top success that these athletes, that, uh, th this was from a sample of uh, only squad athletes within Germany, all right, talking about 1,500 and a couple of, of uh, squad members in all Olympic sports. So their success at the age of 10 had actually a zero correlation with their success as a senior. And the same was true with their top success at 11 to 14 and 15 to 18. We have a zero correlation, that means that um, those who were better at the young age were not those who were also better at, a, at an older age. And this also applies to different types of sports, CGS sports, so those where the performance is measured in centimeters, grams, seconds, game sports, combat sports, artistic composition sports. The results are all the same across the different types of sports. It looks like there is some correlation in combat sports, sports but please note, these are, were negative correlations. So those who were top athletes at seniors were those who were behind at the age of 11 or, four, or, or 10, okay? <clears throat> um, so this was about competitive uh, success uh, at, at, at juvenile age. Now we'll have a look at different types of, of tests, be it physiological, be it psychological, uh, various tests, single tests, and so on. Um, the task is difficult, as I mentioned earlier. And in fact, we find quite a number of studies where talents were identified and then they were followed up for a couple of years and it was tested whether the, res the earlier results of the t talent tests were able to distinguish between higher and lower performers at a later age. And there is actually quite a number of studies that came to, uh, to a, re a result of a predictive accuracy around 0%. But on the other hand, there are quite, uh, also some apparently quite promising studies 
that uh, reached up to 70% correct assignment to groups of higher performance or lower uh, higher performers or lower performers a couple of years later. But I say this appears promising at first sight, uh, sight but I'm going to have to pour some water into the wine. Why? The problem is not actually uh, test accuracy. The main problem is the base rate. Um, Ackerman um, uh, illustrated the case by a very simple calculation. We assume that around one out of 1,000 youngsters actually becomes a, an international senior top athlete, which is quite realistic, by the way. Okay. Further, we, as, uh, we assume that we had a 70% correct assignment by our talent identification, identification tests, which applies to those who actually are talents, but also to, to those who are not talent, no talents. Okay? And the result is that even with a very high correct assignment of 70%, which is at the upper margin of what we have found in empirical studies, the probability of a positively identified talent to actually become an international senior athlete is 0.2%. Okay. And even if we raise the, the, the predictive accuracy of our tests to an incredible 90%, this rate would only re rise to 0.9% of correct identification. Okay? Um, and this is quite um, consistent with what, what, we, what we find in empirical studies that around or up to 2% of those identified as talents at, a, at an early age actually um, attain becoming an internationally successful senior athlete. So the problem of talent identification is not in the sophistication of the tests that we apply. The problem is in the nature of the subject. So whatever we do in, to, to improve our tests and, and, and raise their reliability, valid, validity and accuracy, predictive accuracy, we, it is very improbable that we will uh, um, uh, supersede values such as these. Okay, the next question is, second, talking about TDP, talent development programs. Does early involvement, involvement in talent development programs correlate with later senior success? And more specifically, we're interested whether um, TID and TDP programs preferentially select and facilitate those developmental participation pa uh, uh, patterns that facilitate, facilitate the long-term development of senior success. And this is our question. First, this is um, the recruitment age of German squad members who attained, uh, uh, um, who attained different levels of squads. So in Germany it's from D to A squad, A squad is world class, senior world class, and D squad is a, is a federal, uh, a, a regional squad, uh, which is the initial stage. So there were, were athletes who did not uh, exceed, <coughs> sorry, uh, the initial stage D. And they were first recruited into the system at 15 years. And those, who, the C squad, so, so to say the national junior squad, were first recruited at the age of 17. And those who made it to senior world class were first, first recruited at 19 years. So the more successful at a senior level, the later was the recruitment into the talent de uh, development system. Second, if we want to know whether TDP preferably selects and also facilitate those participation patterns that, um, that benefit the long-term development of senior international success, we have to have a look at which are the patterns, the participation patterns that facilitate long-term senior success. And this is a review of a number of studies that had always one thing in common, they compared different um, groups of athletes who attained higher or lower success. Um, one of them, by the way, is uh, by Juanita which is shown here, um, and they compared them with, uh, with regards to the activities they had engaged in, and this is a summary of um, whether they're engaged, the volume of their juvenile engagement in their main sport or their juvenile engagement in other sports correlated with later senior success, and the symbols are a plus means a positive correlation with that activity and later success, a minus signifies a negative correlation and an O uh, means indifference. So what these results say is, oh, and, and we divide between um, youth success and adult success. So what these results say that is that uh, 
to attain higher youth success, it is beneficial to increase the volume of sport-specific practice in the main sport, while engagement in other sports is either indifferent or even inhibitory to rapid juvenile success. But when we have a look at the juvenile activities with regard to long-term international senior success, it's just the, the opposite. The world-class athlete differ from those who made it only to national class, not by having engaged in more sport-specific training in their main sport, but this was indifferent, or they even trained less at a young age in their later main sport, but consistently they, they engaged in more activity in other sports. Okay. So having a look at athletes who were recruited into the squat system in Germany at a younger age or a, li or a, or a later age, so those who were selected at up to 14 years or at 15 plus years. Um, and what is shown here is being the age structure. So uh, these were, were first recruited at 13 and the later at uh, 17 years. But their participation pattern, at what age did they start training? At what age did they start competing? And at what age did they specialize? So if we can see that consistently those recruited into the system earlier had also started training with their sport competing and had also specialized significantly earlier. The training volume in terms of accumulated hours in their main sport and accumulated number of sessions in other sports um, are shown here and, and it's the accumulation until the age of, of uh, 14 and we can see that they have accumulated more training in their main sport and less in other sports. And as a result when looking where they, where they got to uh, at a long term, um, those recruited earlier were actually more successful at a youth age, but they were underrepresented uh, in terms of senior work class. In addition to that, once recruited into the system, during the next three years we followed them up, and those having been recruited into the system increased their uh, specific practice in their main sport, by another 95% more than their peers who had not yet been recruited. Okay, so um, our last question is the following. Uh, we said that uh, we recruit a number of, we identify a number of talents and we treat them and pro provide con con conditions and because of that they develop better than their peers do who have not yet been in, uh, involved in the system and uh, most of them move, or some of them move up to the next stage but some, and some don't. But it may also happen that um, not only are a number of the initial group deselected, but it may also be that others enter the system at a later age and they, re and they replace those who have been deselected because they have been uh, developing more prosperously out outside the system and are now attributed greater potential. So there, might, there may be some exchange between these two groups. And this one is not exclusive, and uh, the, the, the population is not exclusively from, the pri from those involved in the prior stage. Okay? And this may happen again at the next stage, and again at the next stage. So importantly, this population will in this case not have developed exclusively from the ranks of those already selected at a young age, but it's being composed by those selected at a young age, or a little bit later, or even later, and so on. So it's composed by athletes who have developed within the system, and those who have developed for quite a long period outside the system. So the question is, does the population of senior elite athletes develop from those selected early and their long-term nurturing, or rather emerge via the cause of repeated selection, deselection, and replacements through the consecutive age stages? Can this question be researched? Yes. We have to have a look on, uh, at the exchange of athletes between squad and outside squad, or system and outside system. We need to know how many of those selected early actually attained becoming a top senior athlete, and how many of the top senior athletes were actually already selected into the system at a young age. This is a... Um, 
These are the, the, tra the, the annual transitions of athletes between squat stages within the German squat system. And what is interesting here is that at each stage there were side entrants and quite a lot of side entrants at, uh, at later stages and later ages. This is the important point here. Now, going through different TDPs, um, we find that there actually is quite considerable athlete to annual athlete turnover. So this is shown here for, for example, uh, sport clubs who are active in TDP, uh, elite sports schools, youth soccer academies, or national squads in different sports. And we find that the annual athlete turnover is around 20 to 30 percent uh, in these locally based programs and at a national, national squad level it is even above 40 percent. And this signifies, signifies that after say five years um, only less than 40 percent of the um, of the involved athletes um, are, no, only less than 40 percent of the initial athletes are still within the system or in case of national uh, junior squads of even less than 10 percent. Um, okay, I will speed up a bit. This was supposed to look slightly different. <laughs> okay, there is actually an ordinate and there is actually an abscissa, which is invisible. Um, what is shown here is it sometimes pops up. Um, all right, so what is shown here is exactly what I just mentioned. Um, an example from soccer uh, TDP system. Uh, of those who were uh, recruited at an age of under, under 11 or under 13, um, at the age of, I think it's 20, no, under 19, 14% or 9% are left. And it's a continuous decline. Okay? And on the other hand, those who made it to the national A team of Germany, those who, who we see in the, in, the, in the World Cup, for example, um, actually were being built up gradually across all age stages. And we find, find the same for the U teams, um, membership in the U team, um, how, many, uh, how many of those being in the under 15 uh, category remain in the U system and how many actually attain playing in the, in the national team at a senior level and on the other hand, how did the population of the national A team build up over the stages. So we, can, we, we got answers for our, two, for our four questions. First. Um, we can see that in sports systems where competitive sport is cultivated massively, talents, uh, to future top athletes can actually not be predicted reliably by way, uh, by way of young age TID. Second, particularly early TDP is neither necessary nor beneficial but rather correlates negatively with long-term senior success. Early TID and TDP preferentially sele uh, selects and also uh, um, reinforces early specialization and intensification while the development towards uh, international senior success is rather vice versa and finally the population of early selected and uh, successful seniors of the early select selected and of the successful seniors are not identical uh, populations but rather uh, widely disparate populations so the population of senior top athletes rather emerges in the course of repeated selection, deselection and replacements across all age ranges rather, rather than developing from those early selected and their long-term continuous treatment. Okay, I'll speed up a bit. So there remain some questions from these results that we um, might um, uh, address. Um, for example, um, be it practitioners or, or uh, managers in the sports system, uh, we're asking ourselves, at what age to start TID and TDP? What numbers of athletes to involve at what age? By what criteria to select them? And also, what conditions and what uh, services to provide to them? And uh, I'm very much looking forward to a further uh, exchange. Thank you once again for the invitation and for the technical assistance. Thank you.